Right, hi guys, I need to get a tripod off my camera, obviously. Um, the reason it wouldn't work, I'm going to go out of the shot and show you the camera. Um, make sure you can hear me. Um, the reason it wouldn't work then is I put the new tip in. I didn't put the white shroud on. I must have fell on the floor when I was mucking about there. You need to make sure when you put this in, when you first get it, that you don't start snagging the rubber seal as you wind this on. Because once it stretches, it's, it's hard to get it back in there each time. So, you've got air, you've got tip on, safety glasses. You need one glove, I'm left handed, you need one glove for your hand that's supporting the gun. If you try and do it free hand, it will be a bit wobbly. So I put one hand on the job, support the gun, and then you can, if you're doing a big arc, you can use your arm as a pivot, and you just use this as a guide. It's so easy, you can see what you're doing. Don't be scared about the initial, I mean, sometimes when you strike, there's quite a bang and there's a spark where it, it makes contact. <coughs> Now, I don't know if I mentioned it in the other early videos, you want to, when if you're doing anything like this, the area around the cutter, everything gets covered in um, the oxide that you're blasting away. Really, you should do it, if you were in a workshop, proper environment, you'd be doing it over like a water bath to catch all the dust. But it hits the floor, my window sills, it's too late for me, <laughs> my window sills on the double glazing are all pitted with rust. Um, back of my trailer, the plastic on the mud guards rustled over it. Luckily, it didn't reach the van. But just bear that in mind. Everything in the vicinity. Like don't do doing this with your wife's car and driving, or your mum's, like the boy over the road who borrowed it. <laughs> anyway, so machine on, airs on. Now the other thing is, my garage basically just runs off an extension lead. I need to get some proper sockets put in there. So I run the compressor off of my extension lead in the garage and I run an extension lead from the kitchen so it's on a different circuit otherwise when the compressor starts it trips the electric out on the main board um, so just bear that in mind if you haven't got proper sockets in your garage or your workspace the current drawn from the com it's the compressor running all the time it draws the start up draws so much and the plasma cutter running it can melt your extension leads and make sure you uncoil them because they can get really hot and can catch fire. I'll try and do it so you can see. Make sure your earth's on. Burn that tip out. That's because I moved the compressor. I had to turn the thing off. Hopefully, it'll be all right. You can virtually, that is so thin, you can cut as fast as you can get air from your compressor. Um, when you go onto the gas bottles, they're quite a bit thicker. You have to turn the machine right up, you have to move quite a bit slower. Um, these are tiny machines, I think they're probably, they say they're rated to cut up to 6mm, but I'd say more like 
probably three mil comfortably without burning the machine up. But um, I'll do a little bit more cutting and I'll turn it off so the video is not too boringly long. But this is um, the CT312 Plasma Teak Arc Welder. I haven't used the Arc Welder yet. I have used the MIG Welder. Um, sorry, the, the TIG Welder. Um, I'll do that on another video. I'll get the, the box of the TIG torch out and everything. Uh, the only thing that is a bit of a pain in the ass is connecting the gas and everything up. They didn't really think of that. I think it is a plasma cutter that they've added the technology into, but I haven't thought about. They should have a separate gas port and all that sort of stuff. But I'll just do a little quick bit of cutting, and then I'll check the video. My nose is in it, and I'll do another one. Not over my big nose on the video. I just I did one earlier on, couldn't hear myself talking. That's why I'm standing right next to the video. You'll probably see my big conk. That's it guys then. Plasma cutter. I'm just going to grab one of my gas bottles and I'll just show you at the, at cutting that thicker stuff. Any trouble when you're cutting these out is that you get a slag on the back. Um, you've got to get a chisel at the perfect down. It comes off really easy. But just remember, not so much on these big stuff. I use these for fire pits and um, shadow lanterns. And these, are, uh, these are ones I made a couple of years ago and I just use these to show people when they do their own design and I cut it out for them. That's on uh, colour gas bottles. Bottles that are no good to anybody else that the people can't refill. Anyway, I'll have a look at that and load her up. Okay, bye. Subscribe if you want.